Hi guys. Um, so no jokes for now, uh, but um, uh, we do have a nice discussion of Lindsay's Law coming up. Um, so I will warn you that um, this is going to be a little bit tricky as far as how we can actually talk about this in this medium. Um, this is something where I really, in, in the classroom, rely on um, kind of a lot of uh, physical motion and um, yeah, just moving around and, and using props and that kind of thing. So this, uh, uh, we'll do our best. Okay. Um, I do urge you to read section 20.3 in the textbook on this. Um, I think it'll be a, a, a good help. All right, that being said, uh, let's, uh, let's get started with this material. The title of this slide, or at least the subject on the top left, says something like Lenz's Law and Induced Magnetic Field, or something like that. Um, hey, good. Um, there's a little taskbar covering that up for me. Lenz's Law and Induced Magnetic Field. So we've got our conducting rail that's sliding to the right um, in this region of space where we've got a magnetic field that's into the page. And I'm ask, asking us a question. We've got a current uh, that's running around this circuit, and it's running around the circuit in the counterclockwise direction. And we know that any time we've got a current in a wire, it generates a magnetic field. So what's the direction of the magnetic field that's caused by this current? So that's our question. What's the direction of the magnetic field? So if I look at kind of my, my current here, my current's going around this way, it's going around and it's marked everywhere. It's going around in the counterclockwise direction. And what's the direction of that induced magnetic field? Well, if we use the right hand rule, um, here's, a, here's my loop, okay, my current is running around um, this away in the counterclockwise direction. If I use my right hand rule and I put my thumb in the direction of the current and leave my fingers uh, in the vicinity of where I want to figure out the direction of the magnetic field, my fingers are pointing towards my face. My fingers are pointing away from the screen. So the direction of the magnetic field, the direction of the induced magnetic field is out of the page. So I would have a be induced that's out of the page. And it just so happens that, it, that it's actually in the opposite direction of the original magnetic field. But that's not always going to be the case. So we got, we've got two different magnetic fields here. Um, one of them's into the page and the other one's out of the page. All right, so let's, um, let's check this next slide out. Okay. So now it says uh, what? It says, what happens if we push the rod to the left instead? So I know the picture still has the rod going to the right, but what happens if we actually push it to the left instead? Okay, well, if we push it to the left, um, the next question is, what's the direction of the current? All right, so, we, to figure this out, we have to think back to um, the, the lecture where I first introduced this idea of this moving rod. And now it's going to the left in this magnetic field. So I've got some negative charge there, some electrons. Those negative charges are going to the left in a magnetic field that's into the page. Um, the right hand rule tells me that the force should be downwards. Uh, of course, it's a negative charge, so everything gets flipped. Um, so my negative charges tend to accumulate up here and the positive charges tend to accumulate down there. Oh, okay, this actually makes sense. It would be the exact opposite then of what we see here. Now we would have a negative side there and a positive side there. So positive there and negative there. And as a result, what happens to our current? Well, our current runs in, whoops, what did I do? Our current runs in the exact opposite direction. So now our current is going to run around in the clockwise direction. All right. Okay, so now the question is, now that we've got those, those first two ones figured out, the question is, what is the direction of the induced magnetic field this time? All right, so I've got a current 
running around in the clockwise direction. What's the direction of my induced magnetic field? Well, let's see, I have to put my, my thumb so that's pointed clockwise. And now my fingers are in the middle of the ring. My fingers point towards my computer screen. My fingers point uh, towards the page. My magnetic field, my induced magnetic field is into the page this time. So my B induced is into the page. So on the last slide, on the last slide, I said, well, this the induced magnetic field is not always going to be in the opposite direction of um, the original magnetic field, and and here's the counterexample uh, that that proves that. All right. So what is it that's going on in each of these two situations? Well, if I, I if I go back to the first slide. Um, What's happening is I, is I slide that rod to the right. As I slide to the, that rod to the right, my flux is increasing. So flux is increasing. Uh, well, the, um, uh, the, the circuit doesn't like that. The circuit doesn't like the fact that the flux through it is increasing. It likes the status quo. So it doesn't like the fact that the flux is increasing. So what does it do? It sets up its own magnetic field that tries to compensate for that change. So we've got more and more and more flux pointed into the screen. It sets up its own magnetic field that's out of the screen to try to compensate for that change. All right, let's, let's go back to the, uh, the second slide. Okay, in this case, when we've got the rod slide into the left, our flux, is decreasing. So as we slide this rod to the left, we have less and less and less field lines penetrating uh, through, this, through the area of that coil. And that coil doesn't like that. It likes the status quo. So what's it do? It sets up its own magnetic field that tries to compensate, compensate for the change. So it sets up a magnetic field uh, to try to maintain the status quo. It sets up a magnetic field that's into the board or into the screen. All right. So what I've been describing to you here are two different examples of Lenz's law. Um, so the book definition says that the direction of the magnetic field, excuse me, <coughs> sorry. Uh, and I'm also sorry for coughing in your ear just now. Uh, the book definition says the direction of the magnetic field induced within a conducting loop opposes the change in magnetic flux that generated it. Okay, we're always trying to keep that magnetic flux status quo. So if the flux is increasing, then our magnetic field, our induced magnetic field is going to be opposite that increasing flux. If our flux is decreasing, then our induced magnetic field is going to be in the same direction of, the mag of that magnetic flux to try to keep the status quo. So that's the book definition. Um, I've got my own definition. Mine says that nature hates change. And if we have something that's capable of carrying a current, which, which is important, we're talking about um, maybe circuits or, or coils or whatever here. If you have something that's capable of carrying a current and the, magnetics and the magnetic flux through it changes, then that object will set up a current that's induced magnetic fields tries to compensate for the change. This is Lenz's law. Um, there's no math here, but this is um, basically all those multiple choice questions that we have in the middle part of the homework assignment for this week. Um, all of that conceptual knowledge is wrapped up in Lenz's law. And this is how we, we try to figure out um, the direction of the current and the direction of the induced field um, when we've got some um, induced current and induced magnetic field uh, with a changing flux um, through some area of something. Okay, so let's see what the next slide says. Um, okay, reasoning strategy for Lenz's law. It says, first, well, we determine whether the magnetic flux um, is increasing or decreasing which I definitely showed you two examples of that. Um, we find the direction of the induced magnetic field, um, find, figure out what that direction of the induced magnetic field must be 
uh, in order to change, um, or excuse me, in order to oppose that change in flux, I'd be better off just reading straight from the slide, huh? Um, and then what do we do? We use right hand rule two to determine the direction of the induced current. All right. So what I could do now is I could go back to my slides and I could try to, whoops, I could try to um, hopefully erase this, erase all ink on slide. Uh, there we go, okay. And I could apply, try to apply um, that reasoning strategy. Uh, so in this case, what's happening? My flux is increasing. So flux is increasing. Um, so uh, Lenz's law says that my coil there, my complete loop, doesn't like the fact that flux is increasing, so it's going to set up a magnetic field that is in the opposite direction of the permanent field that it's sitting in. So we got all we got. I don't know, maybe maybe ten field lines going into the into the screen uh, through that uh, coil, and as this bar slides to the right, we're going to have more and more and more field lines. Um, that are penetrating the area of that coil. Well, that coil doesn't like that. It sets up its own field to try to compensate for that change. It sets up its own field that's pointed out of the page. So B induced is gonna be out of the page. Okay, and then what we can do with this is say, okay, well, B induced is out of the page. What is the direction of my current gotta be uh, so that I can have a induced field out of the page. Uh, well, let's see. Um, there's my loop. Um, my field is out of the page, so my fingers need to be pointing towards me. And then which way is my thumb going? Oh, my thumb is going in the counterclockwise direction. So as a result then, my current has got to be running around this way. All right, so I hope you guys made the connection with what I just did. We knew what the answers were already as far as the direction of the current because we had done this analysis earlier. Um, but we did the analysis without using Lenz's law. Now, I just did the analysis another way, using Lenz's law to figure out the direction of the current. And you know, by, by using Lenz's law, I wouldn't have had to, had to know that that right there was positive and that right there was negative. Instead, I could use Lenz's law to figure out that information. All right, um, we're gonna use Lenz's law um, in a couple of different um, uh, scenarios where maybe there's not another way to figure out what's going on and we have to rely on Lenz's law. Uh, so that's, that's what's coming up. All right, and this thing that this says is demo, which means that uh, I'm stopping for now and we have to have a demo of some kind. All right. Um, awkward wave. <laughs>